Hi, my name is James Conrad, and it's my pleasure to introduce you to this exam pack, the 70-290. I gotta tell you, I have a lot of fun teaching, and I had a lot of fun doing this whole series. What we did was we started off with the discussion of disks and things like RAID utilities, you know, all the different kinds of quotas that you can configure on disks, how to configure basic and dynamic disks, all kinds of stuff, administrator. So the 70-290 is a great place to start because everything else that you'll be doing as an admin probably builds somewhere on something that we'll be learning within this series. And of course, you've got to have hard disks to get started with that. We also took a look at certain other hard server hardware that you can work with, and we talked about things such as how the drivers work in Windows Server 2003, how they're improved things of this nature. We also take a look at how to work with accounts. This relates to user, group, and computer accounts. And we took a look at not only how to create them, but how to automate their creation so that if you've got a whole bunch of new users coming in, like you might have in a university or something like that, you can create a batch of new accounts very easily and very quickly. And we looked also at how to access various types of resources, whether it's printers. Or and resource access typically can be very baffling because if you've got complicated sets of permissions, it's darn difficult to figure out what the bottom line is sometimes. Well, we have some new tools in Windows Server 2003, one tool in particular, that helps to make that a lot easier. Now, administrators these days have to know IIS to at least some degree, because even if you're not a webmaster or a full-time web administrator, software update services, which we'll be looking at a little bit later. So it's kind of just uh, taken for granted that any administrator knows something about IIS. And then in continuing the discussion of the 70-290, we took a look at Remote Desktop Protocol, or RDP, which works over port 3389 in our Windows systems. Now, it's kind of too bad in a way that we have RDP, because it used to be, you're not going to get me to do any work from my own house. I'm just going to have to come back in tomorrow morning and do it. Well, now with RDP, you can, remote, you can remotely work just about wherever you are, and you can access that actual desktop from a system from a halfway around the world if you want. So we can, there's no getting away from work anymore with RDP. And you can use it for various things, such as terminal services, remote assistance where you can reach out and help another. And we also took a look at event logging and performance. We'll be looking at this as well. Events can be kind of baffling because sometimes they're pretty cryptic, but if you kind of connect the dots, you can often figure out what the various events that you look at are trying to tell you. And then we will also take a look at various performance counters as well. You need to know if your servers are performing properly, and so that's what this will be about. But then we'll also take a look at software to get the proper security patches and critical updates to your systems. You'd have to buy some expensive third-party product, or you'd have to buy Microsoft's own SMS, or Systems Management Server. Well, now, SUS, or SUS, allows you to get a free download to automatically distribute critical patches and updates to your clients. That's not best for all situations, but for small and medium-sized organizations, or for department, your server product, and after you've purchased also your XP product, you're not done paying for things. you got to buy terminal services licenses if you're using that. you got to buy licenses for your user connections, for your device connections, all different kinds of things. You might end up with three, four, five different licenses for a different installation of a connection there. And we also took a look at disaster recovery. Wow, that's mean, and no one's going to let you sleep until you bring your servers back up. There's a lot of pressure there. So you need to know in advance what your disaster recovery tools are, including things such as the backup utility, how to backup and restore, how to use uh, the shadow copy service to quickly restore files on behalf of a user so you don't have to go to tape. We we'll also took a look at automated system restore. We'll take a look at as uh, well as how to use the command console to recover systems that just plain won't boot. Well, all that having been said, i got to tell you, I'm really looking forward to going through this experience with you and looking at all the technologies we have within Windows Server 2003 for the 70-290. Let's get to it and let's have some fun. Thank you. 